Hey guys, welcome to Herbie's Reef. Today we thought we would do a little bit of a tank update and show you a few of the new corals, but mostly we thought we'd try talking about one of our fish, which is something we don't do very often. We're usually a channel that's all about the corals, but uh, part of keeping a reef is also having fish, and uh, this is a fish that we have had a hard time getting one that's similar to this. And as and you've guys seen us do videos before on the copper band butterfly, and this guy's not a copper band butterfly, so I wanted to go over him. The copper bands, we've had a bunch of them. In fact, we named this guy Pinocchio 16 as a joke, but I don't think we've really had 15 copper bands, but we've had a lot. And I've gotten them all to eat, and they, most of them that died did not die skinny, they just died. And they would be doing great one day. One of them, the best one we ever had, even was doing great the morning he died, and then I just found him dead in the tank, and I, I couldn't figure out why. Um, if I were to guess, a big part of the reason is this guy over here who is trying to hide from me. But this guy right here is a jerk. Our yellow tang bananas is just as mean as he can be. And we used to have that sailfin tang in here also named Jimmy, and he was also very mean. The two of them together just really stressed out all the copper bands we've had, and my theory is they're what caused them to die. But we were at School of Fish one day, which is a fish shop in the Dallas area, and he has a lot of the more rare fish. And he was telling us that the copper band butterflies come from Indonesia, whereas the this is a marginalis butterfly, and these guys come from Australia. And he said the trip from Indonesia to the US is very hard on fish, whereas the trip from Australia is a little faster and easier on them. So he recommended we try this guy, and he said that they're still hard to get eating, but not near as bad as the copper band, and that they still eat Aptasia, and that they're a little less um, flighty than the, than the copper bands are. And so far, we've, been, we've had this guy probably three months, which is, we've never had a copper band even close to that. And he's done quite well. So um, I thought I'd go over how we got him eating, and just uh, what we found about him. I, I will say that I have found he's, He's not an aggressive fish by any means, but he is not very scared of the other fish. In fact, he will eat right by Hagrid, our trigger fish, who's, who's really the boss of this tank. He's not, he's not a jerk like bananas, but he tends to be the fish that runs things around here because he's got teeth, and when he eats, you hear him snapping. So I personally wouldn't put my hand in the way of uh, Hagrid when he was taking a bite of something, but this guy will just go right up to him and fin him away if he needs to, like not in an aggressive way, but he just kind of pushes him away like, like he's not gonna take anything from him. So um, when we got him, he had been somewhat quarantined by Lee at, at School of Fish, but he did not eat well for me. Um, and what we ended up doing, we put him through quarantine and I, I tried several different foods and finally found out he would eat clams. So for the longest time, we would put clams in this bag and you'll see there's a clam shell in there. And then after he got used to eating the clams, I would take this Easy Mastic. I don't know if you guys have ever tried this, but I'd put it in the clam shell, and I'll show you guys how I do that. Um, but it got him used to eating this stuff. And this stuff, I, I don't know if you guys ever used the old Mastic, but it, you had to mix it, and it was really a pain. This stuff, it comes in a little ball like this, and you just squish it up, and it, it uh, is already mixed. And then I just pull this bag out and then I take this little clam shell out because feeding him clams is hard, especially if you live, we, we kind of live out in the country. So we, we started doing this and I just smashed this easy mastic in here and then I put it back in the bag. And this taught him to like this food. So in the process, now he'll eat it right off the glass and I'll show you how we do that also. But, um, but you'll see in a second, he, he'll go right to this and start eating it. And now, I hardly ever use this bag anymore. Sometimes I will just to give him a little extra food because the other fish can't get it as much. But I'll show you, you can also take this food and just stick it right to the glass. So I'm gonna do that just to take away the competition a little bit and to show y'all how it works. But you just smash it. And if you have a trigger fish, you have to smash it pretty good because if you leave a clump, oh, he's not, he's not shy at all, you can see. Um, but that trigger fish can yank the whole thing off if you don't smash it on there pretty good. But it, 
they all kind of snack on it and they'll just eat away at it now. He doesn't care at all. Before, he wouldn't touch the stuff. He wouldn't get it on the glass at all. But we trained him with that clamshell and now he, he loves it. He's one of my best eaters. So um, that's my hint for how to keep a marginalis butterfly and I do highly recommend him. He seems, he was a lot pricier than, than the copper bands were. I think my copper bands, I paid between 50 and 100 for them. This guy was $250, but he has lived for me and I think he's gonna live long term. And I'll also say he's eradicated. We, I had a few Aptasia, never had a ton, but there, I can't find a single one since he's been in here. So um, he does a very good job at getting rid of Aptasia. As far as the tanks going, I don't, I've got Emily controlling the phone, so, but if she wants to look, we got this new torch at a frag swap, and I just wanted to show it to you because I love torches with the crazy tentacles, and this thing is amazing. It's got just ridiculous long tentacles, so I hope it will grow this way. I know all the endo torches have the potential to get this, but mine all seem to... Uh, I don't know, they don't, like at this master torch over here, I know when TCK grows them, these have crazy long tentacles, but for me, it never has. I hope it will one day. Um, but that other one, it's been in the tank for a while and it's kept these tentacles just ridiculous. So uh, we're real excited about that one. And then if she wants to go up to our holy grails, just, to, just because they're so beautiful, the right one's the Jolly Rancher from BK Kim. And it's grown a good bit since we've got it. I think it's really happy. And then our Nyx is in the middle. And then the next one is the Grinch from BK Ken. And then our last one over here is the Aqua SD Holy Grail. And it, it's a weird torch. I don't know. It never has real long tentacles at all. It's beautiful, but it doesn't like flow much. And I think the flow's a little high here. Eventually I may move it. It's also splitting though. And I find when this one splits, it kind of does this. It kind of gets kind of pouty like this but uh, hopefully it will get over it and turn beautiful again. It's still real pretty, but I would sure like it if the tentacles were a little longer. So I think that is mostly it on this side of the tank. I did get two new high-end SPS that I thought I might take you in the SPS room and just show you those real quick. And uh, that might be it for this week. Hey guys, here we are back at the frag tank and I just recorded this whole thing once and then somehow realized that my camera wasn't recording. So here's take two. Hopefully I won't forget to show you guys anything that I talked about. This uh, first thing that I'm gonna show you is just my frag rack. This is what I sell off of. And um, the reason I'm showing you this one is the two new pieces are here. And I'm gonna zoom in on them if I can get it to zoom in well and focus. The one on the left, I, I got these from a reefer that sells on reef to reef and he specializes in these two corals. Um, the one on the left is the Reef Wrap Jaw Dropper, and the one on the right is the uh, Vivid Insanity. And these are pieces I've always wanted. I've heard they're kind of a harder to keep pieces, and they're definitely pricier, so I've waited a while to get them. But you can see, I asked him to give me a chunky cut of the Insanity, and uh, he did that. I got two branches here, and each branch has some little branches on it. And its color looks pretty good considering it just arrived in the mail today. It's already got the polyps out and it looked a little better. He sent me pictures, you know, as soon as he cut it. And obviously a freshly cut one always has the colors more and shipping always takes them out. But it did hold some of the pinks, which is nice. Um, and that, that's those, that's the new ones. And this is just my sales rack, but I'll, I'll run through it real quick because it's still got some really pretty corals. I've been getting really nice coloration for these. This one, this big one is the Aqua SD Rainbow, and the one next to it that looks the exact same is the Jason Fox Solar Flare. I think they're probably the same coral. This one next to it, this is a crazy Millie that I got from Jason Fox. It's called the First Impressions Millie. I've never seen it sold ever again, but he sold it. Uh, I, I bought the only one I've ever seen, but I really like this Millie. It's not the most colorful, but it is crazy hairy. It's almost like a torch. I always joke that I have to brush this thing. Um, let me see if I can find the mother colony. Here it is. It, and you don't catch how long and shaggy this thing is when it's not a video uh, or there's no flow on, but unfortunately it's hard to video this tank with the flow on. 
but that's a really nice Millie if you guys ever have a chance to get a piece. And uh, then next to it is my reef, is my splice, my reef Raff rainbow splice, I think. Um, and that one's a really cool one. I got a piece that ha is half and half on coloration. I asked them for a chunky piece on that one also. Paid a little extra to get both colors and, and a chunkier piece, but it's growing really well, starting to encrust, and I'm really excited about that one. Then I'm just gonna kind of scroll around the tank. I apologize for the waves. I've got to find a way to tape the or to video these SPS without like underwater or something. I don't know because my reef brights reflect off the top, so it makes videoing really hard. Um, but I'll figure that out eventually. You guys just bear with me. But this one is my Cherry Corals Pink Highlighter. This is the big colony of it. I, I got this from a friend. And then I also have a colony I got directly from Cherry Corals. And it, I guess colonies, not the right word, because this the, it's getting there. Um, but this one's coloration is a little better because I've had it longer. And it's definitely coloring up. You can see the greens at the bottom. And it's got the pinks really coming out. But this tank has been really cruising well. Um, I know that last time I made a video, I had said that um, I'd had some issues because I'd raised my potassium too high, made some dumb mistakes, but I have corrected those and now it is really doing well. I also had a power head fail on me when I was on a 24 hour call shift and I don't know how long it was off, but my that's when my Matt V Rainbow Envy ST end and I, I still have pieces of it. I've restarted the colony right here, but that was my biggest tinnius colony and it was really a hard loss. And then I lost half of this home wrecker. You can see the black where I cut the the T end part off and it, it was that was an unfortunate loss too because this was really a pretty piece at the time. But then just to highlight a few of my newer, better pieces, this one is the BK Chem Fruit Loops. It's starting it's really been a pretty fast grower for me, already encrusting. It doesn't have the multicolors yet, but it it should get there. Um, and what else do I have? Let's run through here. I don't want to make this video too long to where you guys get bored, but got some really nice colors coming out on these. Some of them starting to get big. This one's the Angry Birds, but it's tiny. I got this directly from Top Shelf and wow, was it a small frag. I don't know what a large one would have cost me, but, but the small one was so expensive. This one's the BK Kim Crack Juice, which it came with these white areas on it. He said it really hates being shipped and it's finally starting to come around a little bit. The polyps come out and I do think it's gonna make it, but I was questioning whether that one was gonna make it for a bit. This one's the TCK Wild Card, really liking the colors that are coming out on that one. And then this is the BK Kim Captain Kosher, probably my most expensive frag in the tank and it doesn't look like anything special. It's one of the smooth skin Malaysian tinnuses, and um, I'm anxious to see it when it gets bigger. If it gets bigger, these are known to be hard to keep, and I hope I can keep it alive. And that's the TCK Blast Wave. It lost a lot of color when I um, went through my issues with the tank, but it's coming back around. This one's the Budgie Smuggler. I, I got it from a friend, and it looked like this when I got it, so hopefully it'll color up. Oh, here's a new one. This is the Brad's Jaw Dropper, and I, I'm really happy with the way this one's looking. What else do I have? I think that's most of the new and exciting stuff. Um, but if you guys see any pieces you'd like to know about, definitely let me know, and I'll put it on a future video. Until then, pl please like and subscribe. I could use a few more subscribers. We're almost up to a thousand, which is exciting. And uh, I'd love it if you guys would help me out and subscribe. And also just let me know if there's uh, anything else that you'd like to know about my tanks. And also keep those comments coming. And let me know what you guys think. Until next time, bye.